When it comes to our understanding of the universe, the 20th century was full of surprises. A little over 100 years ago, we thought that the Milky Way galaxy was home to everything we could see in the sky. We thought the universe was static, unchanging, and possibly eternal, governed by Newton's law of universal gravitation. All of that changed dramatically in the span of a few short years. Einstein's general relativity superseded Newton's gravitation, showing us the relationship between matter and energy and the fabric of space-time. According to his equations, the universe couldn't be static, but must be changing over time. A fact confirmed with the discovery of the expanding universe. His theory also predicted the existence of black holes, which were later discovered, detected, and even imaged directly. This led to a wild idea, that perhaps our universe was birthed from a black hole. So it tells us that within a black hole, a whole new space-time can open up in the future history of this universe. And for, by that reasoning, we in this universe may be the other side of a black hole that lives in somebody else's universe. Join us as we dig into details of the latest theory that the Big Bang could be wrong and we might have been living inside a black hole all this time. Cosmologists can describe the history of the entire universe, from the present day all the way back to a fraction of a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, using only a few equations, chief among them the ones provided by Albert Einstein, and five independent numbers or parameters. These parameters include the densities of ordinary matter, dark matter, and dark energy. More on these in a moment. Along with the amplitude and shape of quantum fluctuations in the early universe. This model, the Lambda Cold Dark Matter CDM, cosmological paradigm, describes hundreds, if not thousands, of observational data points covering scales from a million light years to 10 billion light years across right up to the edge of our observable universe. But these observational successes do not mean our task is complete. The story of the universe is pocked with troublesome holes. We are confronted by fundamental questions about the nature of the cosmos, problems that we have not, as of yet, been able to answer. And perhaps cosmology's greatest challenge is understanding the Big Bang itself, the sudden violent emergence of all space, time, and matter from an infinitely dense point called a singularity. A singularity is an unimaginable bizarre thing, a point where space and time curve in on themselves, making it impossible to distinguish the future from the past. All the laws of physics break down. A singularity is a universe without order or rules. Out of a singularity could come anything that might logically exist. We have no reason to think that a singularity would generate a universe as ordered as the one we see. We would expect the emergence of a universe from a singularity to be unthinkably chaotic, marked by huge temperature fluctuations from point to point. Furthermore, the magnifying power of inflation might be expected not to smooth everything out. In fact, if these fluctuations are too large, inflation may never get a chance to begin. The problems of a singularity cannot be solved by inflation alone. Singularities are strange, but not unfamiliar. They also form at the centers of black holes, those collapsed remains of giant stars. All stars are nuclear furnaces that fuse lighter elements, primarily hydrogen, into heavier ones. This process of nuclear fusion powers a star for most of its life, but eventually the star exhausts all its nuclear fuel and gravity takes over. A star at least 10 times more massive than our sun will collapse on itself before exploding as a supernova. If the star is even larger, 15 to 20 solar masses or more, the supernova will leave behind a dense core that goes into a runaway collapse, contracting into a point of zero size, a black hole. Black holes can be thought of as regions of space from which not even light can escape. Because the speed of light is the maximum speed attainable by any form of matter, the boundary of a black hole, a two-dimensional surface called the event horizon, is a point of no return. Once stellar matter, or anything else, falls within this boundary, it is cut off from the rest of the universe and inexorably pulled toward the singularity at the center. As with the Big Bang, the laws of physics break down at this singularity as well. Unlike the Big Bang, however, a black hole is surrounded by an event horizon. 
This surface acts like armored wrapping paper. It prevents any information about the singularity from leaking out. The event horizon of the black hole shields outside observers from the singularity's catastrophically unpredictable effects. The event horizon effectively renders the singularity impotent, making it possible for the laws of physics to describe and predict all that we observe. Seen from a distance, a black hole would appear to be a simple, smooth, and uniform structure, described only by its mass and angular momentum, and electric charge if it has any. Although physicists have recently raised some interesting questions about whether this conventional picture is consistent with quantum physics, the working assumption in cosmology is that black holes are cloaked by their event horizons. In contrast, the Big Bang singularity, as commonly understood, is not cloaked. It has no event horizon. Some scientists would like to have a way to shield ourselves from the Big Bang singularity and its catastrophic unpredictability, perhaps by something akin to an event horizon. As a result, they have proposed one such scenario. It turns the Big Bang into a cosmic mirage. Our picture cloaks the singularity at the Big Bang just as an event horizon cloaks the singularity at the heart of a black hole. The cloaking protects us from the singularity's mercurial and nefarious effects. Such a cloak would differ from an ordinary event horizon in one critical way. Because we perceive that our universe has three spatial dimensions, the event horizon that cloaks the singularity at the heart of the Big Bang must also have three spatial dimensions not just two. If we imagine that this event horizon also came about as a result of a cosmic collapse, just as a black hole's two-dimensional event horizon is formed by the collapse of a three-dimensional star, then the collapse would have to have taken place in a universe that had four spatial dimensions. This kind of extra-dimensional scenario, in which the number of dimensions of space exceeds the obvious three, is an idea almost as old as general relativity itself. It was originally proposed by Theodore Kaluza in 1919 and expanded by Oscar Klein in the 1920s. Their idea was largely forgotten for more than half a century before being picked up by physicists studying string theory in the 1980s. More recently, scientists have used it to build a cosmology of so-called brain worlds. The basic idea of a brain world is that our three-dimensional universe is a sub-universe embedded in a larger space of four or more spatial dimensions. The three-dimensional universe is called a brain, and the larger universe is called a bulk. All known forms of matter and energy are stuck to our three-dimensional brain like a movie projected on a screen, or the shadow reality of Plato's prisoners in the cave. The exception is gravity, which permeates all of the higher dimensional bulk. Let's think about the bulk super-universe of four spatial dimensions that may have existed before the Big Bang. We can imagine that this bulk universe was filled with objects such as four-dimensional stars and four-dimensional galaxies. These higher-dimensional stars might run out of fuel, just as our three-dimensional stars do, and collapse into black holes. What would a four-dimensional black hole look like? It would also have an event horizon, a surface of no return from which no light could escape. But instead of a two-dimensional surface, as we have in ordinary black holes, a four-dimensional black hole would generate an event horizon with three spatial dimensions. Indeed, by modeling the collapsing death of a four-star dimensional star, we observe, under a certain set of assumptions, that material ejected from the stellar collapse can form a slowly expanding three-brain surrounding this three-dimensional event horizon. Our universe is this three-brain, a hologram of sorts for a four-dimensional star collapsing into a black hole. The cosmic Big Bang singularity becomes hidden to us, locked away forever behind a three-dimensional event horizon. But is this real? Well, to be honest, this model has a number of things going for it, starting with the fact that it eliminates the naked singularity that give rise to the universe. But what of the other long-standing cosmological problems, such as the near flatness and high uniformity of the cosmos? because the four-dimensional bulk universe could have existed for an infinitely long time in the past. Any hot and cold spots in the bulk would have had plenty of time to come to equilibrium. The bulk universe would be smooth, and our three-brain universe would inherit this smoothness. In addition, because the 4D black hole would also appear to be nearly featureless, our emergent three-brain universe would likewise be smooth. The larger the mass of the four-dimensional star, the flatter the three-brain. 
And so the flatness of our universe is a consequence of its being residual detritus from the collapse of a heavy star. In this way, our model of a holographic Big Bang resolves not only the main puzzles of uniformity and near flatness of standard cosmology without resorting to inflation, but also nullifies the damaging effects of the initial singularity. The idea may sound crazy, but there are several ways one might be able to test it. One way is by studying the cosmic microwave background radiation. Outside of our three brain, we would expect there to be some extra four-dimensional bulk matter, something pulled close by the gravitational pull of the black hole. We can show that thermal fluctuations in this extra matter will create fluctuations on the three brain that in turn distort the CMB by small but potentially measurable amounts. Our most recent calculations indicate that our model is broadly consistent with the newest data but some simple inflationary models provide a better detailed fit. Could our model have some missing pieces? For example, if the four-dimensional black hole is spinning, it is very common for black holes to spin, then our three brain may not look the same in all directions. The large-scale structure of our universe would appear slightly different in different directions. Astronomers may also be able to find this directionality by studying subtle variations in the CMB sky. Of course, even as the holographic Big Bang potentially resolves one giant question, the origin of our universe, it simultaneously raises a new set of mysteries. For most among them, where did our universe's parent universe come from? After all, frankly, science, as it is formulated now, can answer the question of the origin of the universe. What it can do is furnish models that describe possible scenarios. These models are excellent tools that we can use to push the boundaries of knowledge to earlier and earlier times, in the hope that observations and data will guide us further. Knowledge only advances if we push it forward and take risks doing so. There is no fault in our drive to make sense of a deep mystery through reason and scientific methodology. This is what we do best. What is a fault is to claim that we know much more than we do and that we have understood things that a moment's reflection will tell us we are very far from understanding. There are many questions that call for intellectual humility, and the origin of the universe is foremost among them. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.